inspiring, firm way that you handled your son. I'll have no more of your sarcasm, Alex. <clears throat> I'm still head of the family. Really? Well, I think I'm having serious thoughts about that after the way Alan made you back down. <laughs> you know, you'd be well advised not to make the same mistakes my daughter did. I was once very fond of Tracy. Are you implying that I'm losing favor, dear uncle? You're certainly pressing your luck to the limit. Well, it seems I've been doing that for some time now. And it also seems apparent that I'm going to have to continue to do that in order to get control of all our financial dealings. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you better think twice. You know, in the Quartermain dynasty, the men inherit that responsibility, and only the men. They're the ones who carry on the family name and tradition. Edward, I didn't know you were a chauvinist. A realist, Alex. It appears my son is finally beginning to show his mettle to prove he's a true Quartermain. Why? Because he's having a casual affair with another woman? No, no. By refusing to allow any woman to dominate him, including you and his wife. Alan is finally coming of age. He's my image. My son. The son I've always wanted. I see. Well, enough of your intense fatherly devotion. At the moment, I'm more concerned with the problems at hand. Well, just remember what I've said, and uh, don't push too hard. Also, don't ever make the mistake again of expecting me to take your side against Alan. Oh, believe me, I've learned my lesson. You know, there's something else that you should be concerned about. I had a rather frantic phone call from Laura Baldwin this morning. Laura Baldwin? We don't want her involved in this. She's already involved. She wanted to know where Luke was. In fact, she was mighty insistent about <sighs> it. That girl is gonna cause trouble if Luke Spencer doesn't show up soon. My point, precisely. With the Ice Princess gone, you can be sure that Cassidyne and Scorpio are going to intensify their efforts to find James Duval. Edward, I was as careful as possible about James Duval. But you did allow Laura to meet him, to be a liaison with him here in Port Charles. Well, yes, but I had to maintain some kind of contact with him. I couldn't spend all my time with Duval. Oh, yes, you were very clever, Alex. And I depended upon your cleverness to help us succeed in that very unstable and costly venture. But I also told you it was a mistake to bring Laura into this. I suggest you rectify that mistake. Or yesterday's art auction may prove to be our downfall. Ah, it was sensational, Jesse. It was really that good, huh? Oh, even in my wildest dreams, I couldn't imagine that much profit for General Hospital out of that art auction. Care to tell me how much profit? Oh, I'm sorry, that's confidential. But I can say that it exceeded our estimates. Wow. Well, Lila Quartermain may be rather tired today, but I think we all owe her a big vote of thanks. Ah, uh, you can say that again. I take back every word I had to say about that lady. She's a genius. You don't have to go overboard. Well, uh, maybe I am gilding the lily, so to speak. You know what seemed awfully strange to me was about that statue being stolen, didn't it? Strange? It was criminal. Dan, the word all around the hospital today is that Luke Spencer took that statue. Now, that doesn't make any sense to me, does it to you? Not to me. At least he didn't get anything expensive. That black statue was a real loser. I can't figure out why Luke would want it. I'm sorry, I overheard you talking about that little uh, black statue. Yes, we were just wondering why Luke Spencer would swipe it. A puzzling thing, isn't it? Well, wasn't that the thing you wanted to make a pre-bid at the auction on, Mr. Castle? Yes, I was. Well, then, would you please tell us why it's so valuable? Valuable? Mrs. Brewer, it's in the eye of the beholder. What uh, is intriguing to some collectors could be repelling to others. Well, it just goes to show that being honorable doesn't always pay. Now, Steve didn't let you bid on that thing before the auction. What do you mean, Dan? Well, if Steve had let him pre-bid, then he would have the black statue and General Hospital would have an extra $2,500. This way, we're all losers. So it seems. Mrs. Brewer, is it possible that I could talk to uh, Leslie Weber? Well, I think it's very possible if you just turn around. <laughs> Leslie, I'll I was see you later, just, just trying to locate you. How nice, and here I am. Do you have time to have a little tea with me? Ah, uh, well, maybe just time. Oh, wonderful. I, I'm, I'm trying to get through my schedule in kind of a hurry this morning, because, uh, well, uh, Rick is getting a commendation from the police department. I said I'd be there. 
You must be very proud of him. Oh, sure, sure, why not? He's a good guy. I'm sure the occasion will uh, cause a great deal of interest. <laughs> Although, um, Rick is a fascinating subject, uh, I'm frankly more interested in you and your daughter, Laura. Oh, well, then, why not? Let's take a few minutes and give you a chance to talk about your favorite subject. I'll be in the cafeteria. Uh, well, have you decided which of the two of you is going to tell me about this family's bizarre financial condition? There's nothing bizarre about the mountain. Uh, merely complex. Oh, you're right. It's so complex, nobody's been able to enlighten me about it. Well, all that has passed, Alan. We have decided to tell you the entire truth. I'm so pleased. I'm all ears. Well, basically, our uh, primary investment plans concerned that rather ugly black statue you saw at the auction yesterday, the one that disappeared. Mm -hmm. I thought it had something to do with the statue. It's also the same object that was stolen off the dock the day that uh, Alex arrived from Rio. And I purposely made it ugly in order to avoid the uh, situation that happened. Well, that's very interesting. It's hardly illuminating, though. Well, we're getting there. Just relax. Alex uh, painted the statue black in order to disguise its true identity. Alan, it is the biggest diamond in the world. And I acquired it through some very clever financial dealings. And no small amount of uh, quarter main funds, I trust, as well. I don't deny it. The diamond did cost a great deal of money. That's why our... Um, European holdings are a little low at this point. But once we recover the diamond, and we are very certain that uh, Luke has it, we'll not only recoup our losses, we'll make a huge profit besides. Naturally, you'll be a full participant in that profit, Alan. All right, fine, but why all the secrecy? Secrecy is a necessity when you're dealing in diamonds. Well, I think it would be very wise not even to mention this to Monica. This uh, information should stay strictly in our own immediate family circle. Well, I see nothing wrong in that. Well, there are those competitors who want the diamond for themselves. That's why the house was ransacked the night that uh, you and Monica gave the party for me. You've always done everything with a big splash, haven't you, Alice? Mm. Oh, Lord, I don't have very much time at all. Please, Leslie, a few minutes more. I would very much, if it's possible, uh, for you to talk a little bit more about you and uh, the ones that are closest to you. How do you do this? You keep throwing me totally off balance. I'm an ardent admirer. Even Laura never ceases to amaze me with her beauty and her charm, so much like you. Oh, well, so my schedule will be shot. You just go right ahead. You say a few thousand more flattering things about me, and I'll try to bear up. Well, something troubled me uh, yesterday at the auction. Something uh, about Laura, I mean. Oh? Well, she seemed to be very distressed and very defensive about um, the reason why Luke and her friend stole that little statue. Yes, well... Gosh, I've been a little bit sneaky with you. That's part of the reason why I... I thought we should have some tea this morning. Want to talk about Laura? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, you were right. Yesterday, she was very upset, extremely. I'm sorry if anything I can do to help. There might be. I talked to her this morning, and she asked me if I could find out from you why that little sculpture is valuable. Is there some special value to it. About the statue? Yeah. Well, um, I found it very uh, unusual, rather unusual. And I do collect modern art. Oh. Not always knowing really for what reason I like these things, you know? Yeah. Mr. Castle, you have a phone call. Would you excuse me for a moment? Oh, yes, of course. Yes? Uh, Mr. Castle, do you want to report on Luke Spencer? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, well, I checked with the men on the docks, the airport, the bus terminal, the train station, and all the car rental agencies. Luke Spencer did not leave town by any ordinary means of transportation. What about his own car? It's in the garage of his apartment. The only way he could have left the city was by hitchhiking. Um, shall we stay with it? Of course. What about the girl? You mean Laura Baldwin? Yeah. Shall we move on her now? Yes, why not? 
I'm sorry, Leslie. Some European cables that required immediate answers. The fascinating world of international commerce. Not nearly so fascinating as what we were talking about before. You and your daughter, Laura. Who is it? Robert. Come in here. I want to talk to you. What happened? Has something happened to Luke? Laura, look, I'll give it to you straight. He's in a whole lot of danger now. Have you been in contact with him? No, I haven't heard a word. You're not lying to me. It's absolutely important that you're honest at this stage. You're talking about honesty? Have you ever once been honest with me? Look, I want to know. I want to know exactly what kind of danger Luke was in. I can't tell you. All I can say is that there are a number of people involved. What people? Look, you have every right to be angry. I'm as concerned for his safety as you are at this point. Oh, no, no. Uh-uh. That's only more of your, uh, your charming deceit, Robert. The glib little smile. It's all part of your bag of tricks, and it's not going to work with me anymore. Lord, please, I'm sick look. of all this mysterious behavior. You've had him tailed. You've pumped me for information, madam. Alex hired him to find that, that, that stolen art object, and you've gotten more involved in the job than he has. Listen, th th all these questions aren't helping anybody. Well, it's helping me, because I'm just beginning to realize that you're just one big bundle of surprises. Why would Luke have to jam the elevator that day so that you wouldn't follow him? What's the use? And I was with you that day, when you picked the lock and you got into Luke's apartment to find out that he had been robbed. Luke keeps telling me that he's getting closer and closer to success, that he's going to get his big bonus, and now, all of a sudden, he just disappears. Laura, look, if there was one thing in this world I could do for you, it would be to answer all of your questions. I have had it with you, Robert Xavier Scorpio. If that is your real name, I'm giving you one chance, one more chance to level with me. I want to know who you are and just what exactly you're doing with Luke. I want to know now. Sorry. I can't tell you. Then don't waste any more of my time, because I'm going to find out who you are. Don't try to stop me. Laura, look. Make yourself at home. I am leaving. Laura!